Talison Jaffe is an accomplished actor and also stars on Critical Role. I talked to him about what his favorite types of characters are and his player tips for anyone playing D&D. Superman is hard to write. Spider-Man's way easier. Uh, yeah, always, always... Uh, stories love a loser. Uh, and, and, a, and a mess. Uh, Firefly. Firefly is a great show about a bunch of losers. They're, 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 the winners are not fun in Firefly. It's the losers that are fun in Firefly. Uh, that, and, and he wins, and he does okay, and he's, he makes bad decisions, and all of them make, all of them, if you're going to play D&D, &D, chances are, if you actually, like, get, get enough distance from your characters in, in this kind of game, that you realize that you're terrible people. That, like, from a distance, you are just m kind of on a murder spree. <laughs> through the countryside, no matter how, how well you play it and no matter how lawful, good, or otherwise. Uh, and, and leaning into that, you're just going to have more fun. You're always going to have more fun being an underdog and being a loser on occasion or having things go horribly wrong. Horribly wrong is the best part of d and it's, it's the best part of most films and stories is, is horribly wrong. Uh, no one, no one likes every, anybody who wins all the time. I love underdog. I love uh, when, when I when I roll a character, especially if I'm playing with actors. Oh God, when I'm playing with actors, um, I like characters that um, can represent questions that I have about myself in my life. Like if I'm feeling unsure about something, um, or if I'm. It's the same. It's the same way of writing fiction. Is sometimes you create characters that are designed because you don't know the answer to something that like bothers you, of of like how do I feel about the way my parents dealt with me? How do I feel about my relationships with my friends? How do I feel about I, I go through a breakup? How do I feel about that breakup? And I'm going to write something. Somebody who's gets to go through a story to figure that out. And and let Percy went through a story to figure a bunch of stuff out that that some of which I already kind of knew, but some of which. I didn't really know where it was gonna, where the story was gonna take it, and where that information was gonna lead him, and what kind of either happiness or unhappiness he was gonna find at the end of it. And and as long as as, as long as you're not sure about ever, anything, that's always a good character in, in your uncertainty. My 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 favorite my favorite, I would say, is like don't know don't know the ending of your don't have an ending for your character. Write a character who doesn't have an ending yet. Write a character who asks a really big question, whose, whose life and presence is a really big question. And you may find an answer, but don't have one on deck. Because then it's not really that great of a question, is it? You already, everyone already knows what 2 plus 2 is. Uh, find, find something new. Find something, there's always an unanswered question. And there's always something nagging. And you don't have to know where it's going. You'll, you'll get there. It's, it's what story is. I have, I live in LA where we are, it's a city made of aspirations and some of them are, are designed to be eaten by others so that they can maintain their youth and some are designed to blossom into beautiful creatures. There's tons of aspirations, but this is a wonderful, I'm, I'm so proud of this and pleased with this. This is, it's hard not to feel anything other than great love and happiness that this is a thing. I'll say in, in LA, in like the nerd culture of Los Angeles where we're, we're we sort of incubated. Um, there's always been a nice little pocket of, of tabletop players and D&D kids who are also of the opinion that this didn't have to be weird and we could be, we could be fun and nerdy and popular and fun and going out dancing and then going and playing board games and, and doing, you can do everything. You don't have to limit yourself. And, I, and we also always had the drama kids involved. So there was well, not every game was a. I know there's role play heavy games, and then there's the, there's the, the the technical heavy games, and even I love a good like Warhammer 40k game every now and then, where I just want to move a hundred really beautiful miniatures across the board and like lay waste through the power of math and math alone. Uh, but we always had a strong culture for for role play games, where it was all about acting your way out of out of a situation. And Vampire the Masquerade is definitely. If you actually look at the at the play system, rock paper scissors is a weird basis for a for a vampire game, um, and really not the way you really win that game and have a good time uh, necessarily. Uh, but I'm glad that because of this weird internet thing that came out of nowhere, where like, Twitch suddenly happened and we had this great avenue for for sharing this game, and I'm still sort of surprised it worked. That people who wouldn't have thought of playing Dungeons and Dragons because of its reputation. And because of the way that it has often been portrayed, which I don't think is a fair representation necessarily, 
born of a, a weird confluence of events where it was used as such a weird shorthand in fiction for so long for, for socially maladjusted people. And then we sort of leaned into that and then the weird religious push that then made it then also get this weird ultra, ultra so cool it's anti-cool vibe that then added <laughs> hey baby oh. I, um, th- that it, there's just a whole group of people who would really love the game who kind of st- stayed away from it from their first impression I think we kind of have maybe had some help pushing that away and saying and kind of getting the drama kids back and all uh, all the all the all the drama nerds all the movie nerds all the book nerds and there's so many of them right now and, and just saying this this can be a game that will really, you'll really enjoy and will make you feel good. I was a child actor. I was an on-camera child actor for many, many, many years. And long story short, I just really wanted to chill out and have an interesting haircut, which you can't really do as an on-screen actor. And voiceover seemed to be a really nice medium <laughs> where I could uh, dress the way I want to dress, have the hair I wanted to hair, wear and color it and be weird and still get the acting bug out and actually like scrape a living uh, doing funny voices and, and, and performing. And, and in fact, if anything, performing the type of parts I wish that I could have performed, but was definitely, I'm not physically imposing enough to be a warlord in, a, in an army or a superhero, but I get to voice them. So that's really nice. <laughs> Being able to play any role is definitely a thing that it shares with, with voice acting is giving you that, um, freeing you from some of your physical limitations as an actor. But it's also one of the one of the other jobs that I was I was working on over the last few years is I was doing a lot of uh, script adaptation for Japanese cartoons and video games and writing a lot of dialogue, and I was writing original stories too. But but that was not how I was making money, and so a lot of my money that I was 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 making was writing other people's stuff, and that was the big push for D and D is beyond even the, the the funny voices and the acting was just. Oh, I miss storytelling. I miss storytelling so much. And uh, I, my current character literally just came out of a uh, script I had thrown away. It was like, oh, that's good. It's done. It's never good enough to get made. So I'd thrown it away five years ago. And I was like, oh, that's a fun character. Let's throw him into a D&D campaign. And uh, it's certainly better than what I wrote. I'm very happy with it. <laughs> it's more fun.